Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 1st, 2020 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First in diaries, we have a quick diary by Didier showing how to decrypt PowerShell payloads using his tools Base64 Dump and Translate. So what's happening here is that NetHacker will encrypt the malicious PowerShell payload. It's actually more meant to obfuscate. The key is usually delivered with the encrypted payload. And using the DA's tools, it's then pretty straightforward to use this key after you extract it from the malware to decrypt the actual PowerShell payload. To make all of this as easy as possible, Didier has recorded a video walking you through the entire process. And another day and yet another approach escalation vulnerability in an anti-malware product. This time it's a Trend Micro's turn and it's Server Protect for a Linux product. It suffers from a heap-based buffer overflow. And yes, it can use a two arbitrary code execution, but since the attacker needs to have already access to the system that the product is running on, this really only leads to to a privilege escalation. So overall, not super critical, but something you probably want to take care of in particular, since it's the kind of system that's easily missed. And of course, one class of vulnerabilities that tends to be hard to sort of take control of is various software components that of course are included then in various products. One example here, WebKit. WebKit is a browser engine that is used by multiple browsers. It's an open source project that originally was created by Apple. And if you ever looked at user agent strings, you probably saw references uh, to a WebKit in many of uh, these user agents. Now, as the Cisco's Talus team here uh, disclosed two vulnerabilities that recently were fixed by the WebKit team. Both are arbitrary code execution vulnerabilities that could be triggered by the user visiting a malicious web page. And well, after all, that's sort of what you do with your web browser. The first vulnerability affects web sockets. So an attacker would have to load JavaScript into your uh, browser. The the second one, uh, probably a little bit uh, more difficult uh, to detect in some ways uh, because it affects the image decoder GStreamer. Uh, so uh, not a function like WebSocket, which is uh, not really that often used, even though a lot of uh, popular uh, current websites are taking advantage of WebSocket. For an end user, this is really all about making sure that your browser is up to date. Uh, there isn't really much that you can do as an end user by just sort of patching the WebKit library. But of course, if you're using it in any of your projects, you definitely want to make sure that you're up to date. And security researcher Affable Kraut uh, did a tweet and a series of tweets actually about an interesting new skimming technique. So skimming refers uh, to stealing uh, credit cards as they're being used. Traditionally, this is often done in hardware by sort of adding additional readers uh, to uh, checkout counters and such. But uh, more recently, of course, and uh, somewhat popularized by the mage card uh, groups, we had a it, uh, do the same thing by injecting JavaScript into various stores checkout pages. And this is sort of how uh, this one starts, uh, but it goes a step further to make it more likely that the user will actually enter uh, their payment data. Uh, this particular skimmer will capture all uh, the order information and uh, then create a pre-filled PayPal payment form that is then injected into the legitimate site and the user is then asked to enter uh, their uh, payment information. Since all the totals and uh, all the miscellaneous costs and such so is with the order are authentic, it's uh, quite likely that a victim will fall for this particular scam. 
Of course, the end effect of all of this is uh, that uh, the user's uh, payment information is uh, stolen. And to make it all more difficult for uh, the owner of the compromised server to actually discover uh, this uh, problem, uh, the malicious JavaScript code is uh, stored in an image file. Well, uh, that's it for today. So uh, thanks for uh, listening. Now, I mentioned uh, last week that we have this special poll here, so a 20th uh, the shield anniversary uh, poll that I uh, set up to solicit a little bit of feedback. Uh, I got notified that, well, we had uh, more uh, submissions uh, than uh, my account that I had with this particular site allowed. So I'll actually set up something uh, new shortly and uh, stick with me for a couple of days and I'll announce once uh, that uh, poll is open again. And then if you haven't done so yet, you can Fill it out uh, for your chance at winning a Raspberry Pi. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.